I now understand much better the Blur Busters law and I'm going to tell you exactly what is the best motion clarity of this LG C1 with a number and what that means for real world content. So let me start by showing you this very interesting video in slow motion from the slow mo guys. I'm gonna have a link in the description and you can see here what the CRT is doing. This is just fantastic stuff. You see the CRT is drawing line by line and the, the phosphorus layer it f is fading away slowly. So that's why the motion clarity is so good because yeah, let me stop this video. I don't want to steal the content. Just go and, and watch the their video. So the CRT is so good because in motion because the pixel visibility time is very low. It's extremely low. And we learn with this blur busters law that the motion clarity is equal to the pixel visibility time. So what is the minimum pixel visibility time we can get on this LG C1? It's very simple, four milliseconds. <laughs> and why? I'm gonna explain you why and what that means for real content. So what that means for real content is that we are getting four pixels of motion blur. What that means is that if you draw a line, so if we have a vertical line that is one pixel wide, okay? one pixel wide so when you look at that single line is a single pixel a static okay if you move that single uh, vertical column you are going to see four pixels wide so it's going to blur into four pixels that's the best motion clarity we can get on this LGC one and we can only achieve that by using 120 Hertz black frame insertion so I'm going to explain you the math is very simple and I'm going to explain you better what black from insertion is doing. So we're talking about motion pro high on this LGC one. So let me explain you, start explaining you at 60 because it's, it's much easier to understand. So at 60 frames per second, we have uh, 60 images in one second. So 60 Hertz, at 60 Hertz. We have 60 images in one second. So, because this is a sample and hold display, the way it works is the display is drawing a line left to right, top to bottom, and the, the image stays on the screen until the new one comes. And in that way, you have 60 images in one second. Of course, this LG OLED has a PWM that's 40 uh, megahertz, but I'm going to ignore that because I don't really understand how that works. Uh, so that's something I need to <laughs> investigate. So, but for simplification purposes, at 60 hertz, we have 60 images per second. All the images stay on the screen all the time. So, what does that mean for motion clarity? What is the pixel visibility time of 60 hertz? It's the same as as 60 images per second. So that's easy to calculate. We have 60. So we have one second. And in one second, we have 60 uh, images. So we multiply, so that is 0 0.016, that's in seconds. So to get that result in milliseconds, we just multiply by 1000. And the pixel visibility time in milliseconds is 16.666, okay? So that is how long that we can see the pixel. So that is equal to the motion clarity based on the blur busters uh, law okay so black frame insertion is reducing that pixel visibility time in half how black frame insertion motion pro high is 50 percent what is doing is this is what is doing is drawing a line left to right top to bottom and is drawing 50 percent of the screen and then what it's doing, it continues to go down. So then the images, they keep being draw. And these ones here, they become black, perfect black. So it keeps draw, drawing like this. And 50% of the screen keeps drawing like this. So it's black here, black here. So you have black and black. It keeps drawing like this. Okay. 
So by doing that, it's reducing this pixel visibility time in half. So just divide that by, by two. And this is what we are getting when we use black frame insertion at 60 hertz. So we get eight, eight milliseconds of pixel visibility time. So when we have 120, we can do the math. It's the same. So if we have 120, so we have one second, 120. And then we just multiply that by 1,000. We do the same math. We get the same number, 8.3, and then we use black frame insertion, and we just cut that in half, four milliseconds. So what that means, what that translates is, so four milliseconds of pixel vis visibility time is exactly four pixels of motion blur. Why? Because this is the blur busters law. Let me uh, read you the simplified uh, version. So basically one milliseconds translates to one pixel per 1,000 pixels per second. So what that means, <laughs> because that might be confusing. So if you just use simple math, you do one pixel divided by 1,000 pixels per second, you eliminate pixels with pixels, and this seconds goes up, so yeah, one millisecond, of course. <laughs> but what this means is the following. One pixel per 1,000 pixels per second. What that means is that the speed, so when you have an object moving left to right, the speed of the object being 1,000 pixels per second means that in one second, the object moved 1,000 pixels, okay? So for example, if you have a 1080p uh, screen, so that, that's 1920, we have 1920 pixels. So that would take two, about two seconds to, to have the object moving from left to right on the screen, okay? That's about two seconds. If you have 4K, you, you, know, you just keep uh, escalating that. So what that means is that uh, it's basically the same, you know, it's the same to say one millisecond translates to being one pixel of motion blur. That's why it's the same. That's the blur buster slot. So yeah, I would recommend you to go back and watch my, my previous video and maybe read the article that I posted on the previous video. I'm gonna post it here again and also this, uh, this article. So that's how I got to this number. So why, when I look at this image, why I was telling you that actually I believe that this uh, LG, I was saying, I believe that this LGC one is actually between four milliseconds and two. It's actually better. And I commented that I, uh, I commented that Alex from Digital Foundry, he got an LGC one, and in his perception, the LGC one with black from insertion R120 was looking better than a laptop screen that was 300 hertz. So if it's better than 300 hertz then it's better than 240 because four milliseconds is 240 frames. But we are not taking into consideration the grade to grade, okay? So the grade to grade is the responsiveness of the, of the pixels, basically how fast the pixels can uh, shift from grade to grade. So the responsiveness of the OLED is almost instantaneous. It's a lot better than any LCD. So the gray to gray of the OLED is a lot better. So it is possible that a 240 Hertz OLED uh, screen looks a lot better in motion than a, than a 300 Hertz LCD screen. That can be. So yeah, that's probably what it is. He is probably right in his observation, but that doesn't mean that this Motion Pro at 120, so 120 black from insertion is not going to be better than 240 hertz OLED screen. It's gonna be the same, okay? Based on everything that I've studied and my calculations and what it says here, and also on a commentary from the chief. So this is the chief, uh, the blur, blur busters chief. Uh, he's the administrator of the site. And he commented uh, exactly the uh, you know the MPRT of the of the CX uh, he 
he says here the C9 and the CX with max BF5 they can do 4 milliseconds so also I don't understand why um, some people say that the CX has better black from insertion there is a difference for sure because it is darker so being darker means less pixel visibility time or less brightness and we know that the brightness is the same so the CX has less pixel visibility time at 60 for sure but maybe at 120 is the same because he's saying here that LG CX has 4 milliseconds so that's that's the same as the C1 is doing but maybe at 60 is doing something different I don't know I don't understand how you can get a, a brighter black from insertion without increasing the, the visibility, the pixel visibility time. So maybe the CX is doing instead of 50% black from insertion at 60 hertz, maybe it's doing 25%. That would be too low, too low. And if the CX does 25% at 120, then this would be better than 4 milliseconds and it is not it is not it's 4 milliseconds so 4 milliseconds so the cx achieving 4 milliseconds means 50 percent black from insertion at 120 for sure and this is the chief this is not a commentary from somebody who doesn't know this is the guy okay so yeah this is accurate information here so yeah <laughs> This is what I wanted to share with you. And also, uh, let me share with you the math for when we use motion blur, uh, when we use uh, D, D blur 10, motion pro medium, uh, the, the persistence we are getting is six milliseconds. Okay, it's about six milliseconds based on my calculation. Why? Because motion pro medium is doing 75%. Uh, based on my research is doing 75% uh, pixel visibility time so the window instead of being 50% with motion pro high is 75% so we can do the math 75% for example if we get uh, baseline 60 Hertz we divide that we get the 16 uh, milliseconds so then we can do 75% of that so 75% of that is like multiplying by 3 uh, and divided by 4. So we multiply by 3, we divide by 4. So we get 12.5. Uh, okay, so then we just do half of that two times. So yeah, just divide that by 4. <laughs> and then we get, I'm uh, sorry, just half of that. So half of that. So half of that is 6 milliseconds. So 6.25. So we are landing, yeah, I did that math like fast because yeah, it's not, it's just six milliseconds, okay? It's between eight and four milliseconds. You can do the math, you, it's the same same reasoning. The only difference is that uh, Motion Pro Medium, instead of showing half, 50% of the, of the screen visible, is doing 75%. So just do the math with 75%, so it is, slightly worse but it looks very very good I mean still from from 8 to 4 is very very good and actually this is very important too to verify with my eyes that this is actually correct this is what the UFO test uh, means basically when we look at this UFO test here this is what we are looking for on this UFO test this is actually uh, a scientific uh, picture actually this is this was done in purpose so what this means is that having 16 so this is what we have to look for having 16 pixels of motion blur the UFO landing legs are very blurry so that's at 60 frames per second 60 Hertz sample and hold the legs are blurry so when we look at the legs here are blurry so then uh, at 8 pixels, so at 120 hertz, sample and hold, the landing legs are seen, but saucer details are very blurry. So all the details here, these details here are, are blurry. And then uh, at 4 pixels of motion blur, 
saucer details are seen, but you can't count the alien eyes, and I cannot. 120 black from insertion, I cannot count the eyes. So basically, when I look at the eyes, I see six eyes instead of three. So I cannot see these three perfect uh, black points with a white socket. I see actually six. So I know for sure that's, that's, the, that's the value just by looking at it. And in this test uh, pattern, what you can see is that if you look at the, at the pattern static, of course you have to actually watch the, uh, you know, have to watch that on, the, on your browser, not on this video that is 30 frames, of course. So when you look at it static, you see the white uh, vertical lines. But when you follow this, this UFO here, you are going to see that the background is going to become uh, white. If you have sample and hole, it's going to be just white. And then when you use black from insertion, you see you you start to see the separation. And yeah, this is very helpful to understand this phenomenon. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I still have questions. Okay, of course, I want to understand what's going on with the LG CX. If it's doing a smaller window, why it flickers more? Why is darker? And also the C2 is brighter. It only has the, the black from insertion at 60, but it is brighter. And what that what that means, that can only mean that, of course, the TV is just brighter. The brightness of the TV is, is, is superior. Or the pixel visibility time is bigger. So instead of being 50% window, it's a bigger window. So the bigger the window, the, the, the worse the motion clarity but you get less flickering and you get a brighter picture of course so how can you get so my question is how can you get a brighter picture without making that window bigger so you don't affect the motion clarity and if that's the case uh, if, if you know what is exactly the difference between the CX the C1 and the C2 and Based on the chief, the CX has four milliseconds. That's the same as the C1, but there might be a difference at 60 hertz. Um, I don't know. I guess that having 120 uh, should allow for a smaller window, and you still don't have flickering. So maybe this LG C1 or the CX at 120 hertz, it can do it even a smaller window because I cannot see any flickering so for example if I was to see the same flickering at 120 that I see at 60 the window would need to be 25 percent and I would be okay with that to have an option this is for you know for, for a future TV if I can have an option that has even more motion clarity at 120 but it flickers the same as 60 I would get that I would, I would love to have that option, absolutely. So then it would be 25% at 120, 25%. Then I can get uh, four milliseconds, actually. I can get uh, two milliseconds. So I can get this uh, clarity, two pixels of motion blur. So at 120, if the window for the black from insertion is 25%, I can get two pixels of motion blur. That would be fantastic, but the, the screen is going to flicker the same as 60 hertz flickers on this uh, LG C1. I believe. Uh, I might be wrong. Maybe that's not possible to do, but it would be interesting. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions.